Hi, good evening. A very warm welcome, everyone, uh, to yet another learning session from the Outreach Collective. I am Ankur Bora, your host for the evening. And today we have uh, a very interesting session planned on a topic which has been on our minds as career counselors, as university advisors, uh, even as, uh, you know, people associated in the field of helping students transition from school to universities. Uh, we often face this challenge uh, and my, my personal experience of working with Ashoka and Jindal and subsequently with heading the uh, one of the business verticals at Cialfo in India was that the parents find it very stressful. Students find it very stressful to raise funds for their education. Uh, and especially if it's international education, there is substantial amount of money involved. Uh, it's not always that the students are going to the top Ivy League universities. There are different kind of universities, different destinations that are opening up. And there are various bureaucratic challenges, red tape, you know, a lot of things that are unsaid that a student and a parent has to go through. And even us as career counselors sometimes face those issues because we are expected to have answers to all those problems and issues that the student find in their journey while they are transitioning to universities, maybe in India or abroad. So I'm so happy. I mean, we have two of our TOC members here today to who work in this space and doing some fantastic work themselves. Uh, and Mangesh is uh, no stranger to TOC. He has been, as I was saying in initial remarks that Mangesh, I really love what he has been posting in the WhatsApp group. I think every week or uh, two weeks, he posts some information about the education loan landscape, uh, the financial landscape. So I really had this session in mind for quite some time. And I'm so happy that we could have also Arindam, uh, who is doing some fantastic work himself uh, from EduFund, uh, come in also to do a joint session with Mangesh uh, today. So we'll start this session with uh, about 20 to 25 minutes presentation from Mangesh about uh, financial literacy. Uh, post that, I'll have some Q&A for Anirindam. At any point of time, I will encourage, as is the norm in TOC, I will encourage all of you to type in your feedback, write, ask your questions. We may not be able to answer your questions uh, then and there, but subsequently when we reach the audience Q&A session, I'll try to take your questions up. Or if, uh, you know, if, if the speakers have the time and the bandwidth, they may answer your questions in the chat itself. So have a great session, everyone. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you through the next 60 minutes. Uh, and as I said in the, again, in my initial remarks, all of you must be aware that this session will be recorded and put on our uh, social media handles on TOC, and maybe some of us will be sharing this in our personal capacity as well. So it's a, a very warm welcome to both Mangesh and Arindam. Mangesh, I will request you to uh, probably start uh, with a short yeah. introduction about yourself, You know, a brief profile about the work that you are doing and what brought you here, and then subsequently in your presentation. Over to you, Mangesh. Thank you, Ankur. Thank you for a wonderful, uh introduction as well as you know laying the landscape for these next 60 minutes of uh, enriching session which we'll have uh, what i've tried to do is try to put together some basic questions which i get asked all the time from counselors as well as students and try to structure that information so that we can all assimilate this in a very short period of time and of course we can get into details later on one-on-one -on -one conversations as well right uh, my company's name is Peaceful Loan. I have interacted with a bunch of uh, TOC members already. Uh, it precisely comes from what Ankur said, right? There's a lot of anxiety around the entire ecosystem. And to solve for that anxiety, you need some peaceful agent to come in and solve for this problem, right? That's precisely why uh, the name of the company is Peaceful Loan. Uh, let me also introduce myself. I purposely made a slide so that uh, and I always name the slide as who am I and why should you listen to me, right? Uh, I'm a 2012 IM Cal graduate. Uh, I funded my education uh, with an education loan back in 2010 to 12. Uh, post that, I've worked in uh, corporate sector in various big companies as well as new age startups like Pepsi, Deutsche Bank, Castrol, Bira, Pepper Frag. And I founded PeacefulLoan.com a uh, couple of years back. We've helped close to 340 plus students secure about 70 crores plus education loan. Uh, this experience allows me to share uh, 
compiled reasons or the questions which continue to get asked in a structured format and uh, that's what i'm here to share with the entire community uh, we very, we indians have a very very societal uh, lens of looking at loans right uh, we take loans for homes we take loan for businesses we take loans for cars we take loans for bikes we culturally take loans for things which we consider as investments and not expense but more often than not when we talk about education it's always classified as an expense where the parents bear the responsibility of graduating or taking the child to post graduation right hence it's always looked at from an expense lens uh, but isn't education probably the highest roi investment one can make in their life right all of all of us in this community are uh, helping students get there either through our guidance which i could you know in the venture capital term put it as sweat equity and uh, some money being put behind by parents or by banks right uh, in terms of equity capital so this is a very very high uh, return on investment uh, asset class in my opinion the very very important aspect to look at it uh, is that the cost of education is growing at 2x the speed or twice the rate of inflation and hence there will come a point of time when parents won't be able to shoulder the burden of expensive education that's already happening for a broad education and that's why we will keep revolving our conversations around a broad education and it will be very helpful at, or there's a corollary of that for uh, expensive schools in india as well right uh, generally what is the cost of education abroad right when you think of education in india is generally only tuition fees right because you're living in the same city cost of living is very very low but when you're thinking of studying abroad it's tuition fees living cost medical insurances books laptops flight tickets back and forth and minus any scholarship or a part time job stipend you may receive over there the good fact and most most of the times which people aren't aware that education loan covers the entire gamut and just doesn't only cover the tuition fees it will also take into account living costs medical insurances and all other ancillary expenses right so it helps to have education loan fund this entire cost of education versus just the tuition fees right it's a possibility how are students funding the current uh, how are students solving this problem as we speak one is of course their first go to thing is scholarship second is self funding by parents or friends and family third is part time jobs during the tenure at university and fourth is education loan right that's the last priority in terms of pecking order uh, given an option people would not want to get there right that's that's how the ecosystem is placed and that's evident from the numbers in terms of the size of the education loan market versus the size of uh, expenditure done on studying abroad right it's close to about uh, 2 lakh crore expenditure for 7 and a half lakh students going abroad but education loan market size is close to 30 40000 crore at best 50000 crore so it's only 25% of the people who are using education loan as a mechanism of funding their study abroad dream right the rest is still being funded by the top three aspects the key myths which uh, are there about education loan is only people who do not have resources need to take education loan right this is fundamentally something which i very passionately write about uh anybody who's mathematically savvy knows that education loan is a cheaper way of funding their child's education versus breaking their investment then paying taxes and then you know deploying that money in education mathematical not psychological right mathematically it's the right way of funding your education uh second important thing which people keep uh having that at the back of their mind most of the parents are worried that you know i need a big collateral uh to avail education loan right education loan market is now largely a big chunk of education loan market is unsecured education loan that means education loans can happen without any collateral being uh, placed as a security and uh, 
just to give you a size, these unsecured loans can be from 50 lakh to all the way till 1.4, 1.5 crore also, depending on what financial background the uh, family and what university the student's going to, right? Third is parents need a very high income to get an education loan. This is another thing that, of course, I, my income is only 5 to 10 lakh rupees per annum. Can I get an education loan? The answer to that is yes, of course, considering that there are other factors to be taken into account. But education loan is possible. You don't have to give up on education loan just because you have low income. Most of the banks have minimum income criteria of 35,000 rupees per month and above. So till the time you meet that criteria, it's not a big deal to get an education loan. Both problem is parents have assets, but no income. Uh, and should I get an education loan in such case? The answer to that is vehemently no, right? Unless and until you are able to bring in some co-borrower who can prove monthly income, which gives the financial institutions the comfort that there's a repayment capability, right? And fourth point I purposely put because India. So fourth point I purposely put because India is a country of high net worth individuals with low income on paper, right? That's the reality of India. And uh, these people uh, will find it very difficult to get an education loan unless they've started, done the preparation beforehand, right? Uh, coming to the next point is uh, how should you fund your education abroad, right? This is what I was talking about. Uh, funding with loan versus self-funding. What are the key advantages, disadvantages, right? One is a big psychological uh, advantage that uh, students get a sense of being self-made, right? They, are, they have the ability to repay this loan and hence that self-made uh, tag is something which they can carry on their shoulders very uh, like a chip on the shoulder or a sense of achievement, right? Second important thing is uh, education loans by design in India are a uh, great way of saving tax because for eight financial years, the entire interest which is charged on education loan becomes tax-free and hence that interest component is deductible from your taxable income. Third is uh, the advantage of TCS, though the TCS advantage is only a cash flow one-time advantage because TCS eventually reflects in your income tax filing as a tax input, like any other uh, tax deducted at source. When, when TDS is deducted from your salary, uh, it eventually shows up as a tax paid at the end of the year, right? TCS is very similar uh, concept. Uh, it's a tracker put on every single uh, rupee which is being sent outside India, right? That's why Indian government charges TCS. If it's not for education, then it's 20%. If you're able to prove that it's for the cause of education, then it's 5%. But if you're using uh, education loan, then it's only half a percent, right? That's still a uh, sizable cash flow saving from the perspective of uh, funds, because if your education is going to cost you uh, one crore rupee, then 5% uh, or 10% is a sizable amount even in terms of arranging that money, right? Of course, uh, self-funding has its own set of advantages, but the key disadvantages versus education loan is no tax saving. Second is you have to break investments or plan to break investments every three to six months and the additional cost of TCS, right? These are just top of the... Uh, tip of the iceberg sort of facts which I'm trying to bring forward so that it makes it easy for you guys also to have a conversation with students from the first interaction perspective. Banks ask for tons of documents for education loan. Let's try and understand why they ask it. That's why I put three large buckets here. Students' documents essentially are an indicator of how student has done in its past academics. and the university, country, course, which student has opted for is an indicator of uh, what sort of income would the student have at the end of the graduation, right? So these two factors put together give a past academics, give a success rate of how student would do in his future education at that university and hence predictability of future income, right? Uh, 
एजुकेशन लोन इज वन ऑफ द हाइएस्ट एनपीए और नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट और हाई डिफॉल्ट एरिया फॉर बैंकिंग इको सिस्टम टू एन एक्सटेंड दैट नॉर्मल एनपीए और डिफॉल्ट रेट्स आर क्लोज टू वन वन एंड हाफ परसेंट बट द सेम फॉर एजुकेशन लोन इज क्लोजर टू एट परसेंट एंड बैंक हैव लर्न फ्रॉम दर मिस्टेक एस्पेशली फॉर स्टूडेंट्स गोइंग अब्रॉड दे don't have any moral obligation or any financial obligation to pay back this loan and hence banks will always ask for an indian co-borrower either in the form of parents sibling blood relatives the co-borrower can have a larger definition based on which institute you are applying to but the idea is if the student uh is not able to repay then there is a guarantor slash somebody else who banks can contact and that person can repay on behalf of student right this allows banks to have controlled np and controlled np essentially leads to more number of students getting an opportunity to study abroad right more number of students getting loan so you sh- we should look at np lowering np as an access to more number of students if the income level of the family is not good enough to get uh, the large amount of loan which is required for that particular instance then the collateral could really help in terms of extending the limit of course collateral also helps in reducing the interest rate of the uh, loan but uh, these are the bunch of reasons why so many documentations are asked just to summarize this uh, students profile gives a sense of future income possible parents profile gives a sense of yes this loan can be repaid looking at the income levels of the co-borrower property is like a guarantee when you are asking for a loan which is more than what you can afford right i've taken example of property but fixed deposit and other asset classes can also work as uh, collateral right it's just to simplify the concept and try and uh, make people understand why so many documents are asked by any bank for an education loan now this is the next set of question which keeps coming very very frequently when should i start preparing for uh, education loan right basic understanding of documentation eligibility criteria as you should do even before you start applying because there's no point uh, having a child being disheartened that they are not able to get there because of financial constraints versus when you are applying you choosing the right set of universities which are well within your reach right and hence it's very very important to consider this aspect right in the beginning of the decision making or counseling happy to help me and my team are happy to help to any one of you who want to understand what are these basic mathematics around it and second is i have seen lot of students say that boss i have applied at five different universities i'm waiting for my dream university to come through and then i'll start the loan application process it's an absolute no no uh you should never do processes like a line process if that was true then you should have applied for second third fourth university only after getting a dream university rejection right the rules which apply of parallel processing to applying at multiple universities also apply for your financial uh, coverage in terms of education loan you should apply as soon as uh, you've gotten your first admit banks allow you to change your college university etc later on so it's not a big deal to accommodate your better university later on but your timeline of education loan kicks in or the process the entire uh, application bank evaluating your credit worthiness can happen in parallel because uh, unsecured or without collateral education loan takes somewhere close to 2 weeks to 3 weeks in peak season time frame and the same for secured loan sometimes goes from a month to 2 month you really don't want to incur that time or start that uh, time speeder right from your final dream college and then you have very limited time before your visa dates and hence uh, don't put that pressure on yourself start early at least it will make your journey peaceful and you will not settle for anything which comes fast you will try and get the best optimal result outcome for yourself right sometimes this hurry makes you settle for an nbfc or a higher interest rate loan because you just don't have time 
and that's not a wise thing to do right you had all the time in the world but you didn't utilize it so i would urge all of you to also speak to your students this is the right time when they must be receiving their admits for fall this is a great time to start the process now these are the shocking reasons why education loans are difficult or why they get rejected right it's it's a quick overview of how india is right india is a 140 crore population country couple of years back only about 6.74 crore 75 crore people filed income taxes out of that if you were to look at people who actually have 10 lakh rupees and above per annum income is only 0.88 crore it's less than even a percent of india's population right and without even having a 70 80000 rupees income per annum hoping to get a 50 60 70 lakh rupees of education loan is a very difficult task right the problem lies here there is a fundamental uh, fundamental way how india operates is they would want to declare as low income as possible on paper this comes back biting for most many a parents case right all of us have had clients who are wealthy and who fall under this bracket of uh, high income individuals it's always easy for them right but if you look at the entire gamut of population which is looking at going abroad uh, then this is an important aspect to keep in mind right why the education loans get rejected very often right and uh, uh, many reasons right i've just listed top 11 reasons for education loan getting rejected one is non availability of co borrow right i don't have a co borrow low income of co borrower on paper due based on the itr filing or the salary slips or form 16 poor civil score pehle hi problem hai ki bahut sa kam log itr file karte upar se poor civil score that means like it's just funnels getting smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of who's uh, capable of getting loan or who bankers consider as credit worthy right low repaying capacity incomplete fake documentation poor past academic record students having lower than 60% marks have very high chances of loan getting rejected because the banks and nbfcs think that bossy aage ja ke wo university mein bhi kharab karega iska to job nahi lagega to how will that person repay right that's how the credit models have evolved though i am putting it in a very layman term but the credit models are sophisticated models which have looked at this data for last decade and they have come to the conclusion that the poor past academic is a, a good indicator of poor future country of destination people go into russia uzbekistan for medical when they come back to practice in india most of them don't make it through basic examination so it's very difficult for bankers to lend to these high risk areas and uh, and it's not my opinion it's based on what we've seen as an experience right uh, i wouldn't wish any anything bad to any student but bankers have to be conscious of it being a business for them and not uh, just an enabler for students to study right uh, types of courses selected stem management courses are easy to get an education loan versus fashion maybe uh, film making courses these are courses where bankers don't have a good amount of data so it's difficult to get loans for these sort of things unrecognized institution we all seeing what's happening in canada what's happening in uk the kind of efforts right mangesh so, uh, just a 5 minute reminder okay you have yeah five. yeah sure then applying at multiple uh, financial institutions uh, many institution as soon as you apply they will pull uh, your credit score or civil score they'll see last few weeks where all you have applied that's an indicator that boss isne char jagah apply kiya hai चार जगह पे रिजेक्ट हुआ रहेगा तभी हमारे पास आए गिव्स देम अ रीजन टू रिजेक्ट योर लोन राइट सो आइडेंटिफाइंग व्हिच इज द राइट फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर योर फाइनेंशियल एंड यूनिवर्सिटी एंड एकेडमिक प्रोफाइल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दैट्स वेयर आई थिंक द रोल ऑफ एडियो फंड और पीसफुल लोन कम्स इन इज द डेटा एंड एक्सपीरियंस व्हिच वी हैव व्हिच अलाउज अस टू डू दैट मैचिंग ऑफ द प्रोफाइल्स विद द राइट फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन राइट and lastly the age of student being about 35 right these are common reasons which i have seen why student loans get rejected 
I wanted to go over the four broad categories of lenders in education loan, which is public sector banks, private sector banks, NBFCs, non-INR financing, and some US co-borrowers like Discover, Salome. So this is a broad spectrum, and uh, we've partnered with all of them. If you, if you guys have uh, deeper questions in which bank approves what sort of loan, happy to do a separate session because it's it's a one hour, one and a half hour long conversation in itself, right? One thing which we should be completely aware of and uh, should be cognizant of, that public sector banks does not mean the education loan is cheaper, right? It, it's, it's a myth. Uh, as you can see, private sector banks turn out to be the cheapest education loans if students come from good financial background, right? Private sector banks are willing to lend more uh, when they meet the right sort of customer profile. Public sector banks are generally chosen by parents when they want to mortgage their property to feel safe, right? That's largely the uh, pros and cons. We can go much deeper into this, but I'll leave it at that. And uh, you all, all guys know that what service Peaceful Loan provides, right? We help student end to end to get the right education loan, help them operationalize this as well as uh, till the disbursement, right? I would just stop here uh, in the interest of time and uh, hand it over to Ankur so that uh, we give a fair amount of uh, time also to uh, for Arandam to educate all of us and I can also learn from him. I'm very curious. Thank you so much, uh, Mangesh, for that wonderful pr presentation. And I, I know, I mean, you told me that there is a one hour and more than an hour presentation. Uh, yeah. Probably we can revisit that depending on the interest that we can read post this session. Uh, sure, but sure. I would like to bring in uh, a rhythm also uh, for this conversation. And, and there are a few Q&A that, you know, we I have with me. I would love to first take it up with Arindam and then subsequently maybe we can also involve you and others on the, in this conversation. But thank you for that wonderful presentation, really insightful. And I've already seen a couple of messages in WhatsApp saying that really insightful uh, presentation by you. Thank you. So I'd like to bring in Arindam. Arindam, if you can, you know, probably before I jump into the Q&A, briefly introduce yourself and the company sure. that you're uh, co-founded. Sure. Sure. Uh... Thank you, Mangesh. I really enjoyed your presentation. Very well laid out. Thanks, Arindam. Yeah. So, well, hi, I'm Arindam. Uh, so, uh, just a brief introduction about me. Well, I, uh, I'm i in Ahmedabad. We are an Ahmedabad-based company, EduFund is. Uh, my personal background, I was lucky enough, I guess, uh, to go for my undergrad to US almost what 20 years ago when very few people did undergrad. So I did my undergrad from Bloomington, Indiana Bloomington, worked a few years in the US, uh, came back to India, worked in Reliance in asset management. Then I went for my master's to Princeton, worked in a hedge fund, and then came to India and uh, met up with my co-founder, uh, Ila, who is now my wife, and we decided to start EduFund. Uh, Looking back at my journey, uh, I think I come from very heavy finance and asset management uh, background. And the idea of jumping into education and the idea behind EduFund was we often talk about impact, right? I think impact is a word we often throw around very loosely. And I look at it this way, right? What's the foremost form of impact you create on a family or an individual? It's through education, right? Uh, not only in the classroom, but also the peers, right? That is your one of the highest level of impact and it stays with us. Uh, unfortunately, education and quality education comes at a very steep cost, right? Uh, I think Mangesh mentioned that education as an asset class has an inflation, which is twice of your household inflation. It's absolutely right, right? And that was our motivation. Like how can we help parents and students actually go through this massive inflation when it comes to quality education and help them uh, embark on their journey, right? And that's the highest level of impact. So that was the motivation behind EduFund. And that's what we are trying to do at uh, EduFund. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. I mean, that's some, you know, story of founding EduFund and your own personal journey from, journey from US to India and uh, you know the your 
co-founding it with your along with your wife amazing uh, so uh, so happy to have you here with us i mean i will just quickly jump into now the q and a because we are also running sure. short of time uh, sure. can we i mean can we i mean and these questions will be in no particular order but in my sure. own Shoot way, away. as Shoot an outsider away. uh you know could you break down the essentials of financial planning for a student education path i mean where Correct. do where does one start thinking about financial planning if i am a parent when should i start thinking about okay up you know i should start thinking about how i'm going to fund my kids education correct i'll break down the financial planning uh, into two separate buckets right i think what is very uh, which is harder is the financial planning for undergraduate and uh, simply because undergrad happens over a longer duration and is usually self funded uh, when it comes to undergrad the good thing is that most of us right sare log usually 18 saal pe undergrad jaate so it's a very defined outcome so you actually as a parent you have a 18 year runway to plan for undergrad masters is somebody goes at 20 24 somebody goes at 30 somebody even goes at 35 right there's no fixed point for master so it becomes harder to plan masters also i think you don't need to plan a lot for masters why a lot of us uh, have been working for a few years you probably have some savings you are also more credit worthy and also universities in general i'm talking of studying abroad they are much more generous when it comes to giving an aid to master student so masters mein dukh zyada nahi hota hai the so main problem is undergrad uh even if you go to like a very average us university for undergrad it's 2 crores right i mean given how wealthy india is or our income levels right 2 crores is massive right i mean it's massive But... so this is when you should plan and you start planning early sooner the better so the answer is start planning as soon as possible we've got parents who are planning 10 years before time right 12 years before I mean, this is amazing. I mean, I, I, as I was saying, I have worked with a lot of Indian universities, and then last, my last assignment with uh, uh, an edtech company working in the space of helping students uh, apply to universities, attend <coughs> to universities, and I used to, I still go to you know schools to do sessions, and students will come up to me. I'll ask them, you know, uh, where do you want to study, and they'll, you know, generally say U.S., U.K., Canada, and I ask them. uh do you know the cost of education in us and most of the time 9 out of 10 times they are not aware uh and they're like jo bhi hoga papa dekh lenge so i'm like papa to dekh lenge you are in grade 12 wo kab dekhenge aur jab unhe bill aur parents ko jab hum baat karte hain the parents ko batate hain ki this is the cost of education i'm sure my uh, uh, other career counselor can also chip in here uh, that this is the cost i mean it it really becomes a you know eye opener for them i think india mein is cheez ki bhi awareness nahi hai ki us ki education ki cost 2 crore se upar hai Uh, undergraduate me and you are absolutely correct correct I mean, i mean i'm not even talking of the tier 1s even tier 2 is 2 crores right yeah. tier 1 to 4 crore jitne bilkul 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 and i think they, that there lies in the gap and the complete i think complete uh, information block out for our kids in schools financial literacy ke upar parents ke liye bhi kaam karna chahiye and i mean i you said there are some parents who are working for 10 years investing to 10 years to 12 years se invest kar rahe hain apne bachche ki education ke liye i think those will be still a few amongst many that are not even aware of the cost and because yes sometimes... you are yeah you are absolutely right absolutely right absolutely right yeah so but how do you i mean how will you motivate other parents i mean this as i said this session will be recorded and i'm sure <coughs> many parents will listen to it i mean how can you know how can this financial planning uh you know mitigate the cost of uh, rising education education ka jo cost hai wo badhi raha hai so how how does it help yeah. in even managing that <clears throat> aspect correct so i think the one very important uh, thing to understand at the beginning is that whether aap india mein padhna chahte ho ya bahar padhna chahte ho this cost is rising india also actually has universities now jo 25 30 lakh mang rahe hai right which i mean i'm 40 when i was growing up it was unheard of right but she is like to study in india is i mean we never even thought about it right so so this rising cost is on both sides of the 
ocean, right? Whether you're going abroad or in India. Now, having said that, I think we've got what? 90,000 odd parents who are saving on our platform, right? And the one great motivator for them is what we've done is a very simple college calculator, right? How to me, put it in the calculator, right? You could even say not sure. If you're a young kid, you don't know what will he study. You can pick not sure on the calculator and say, Ki, okay, I also don't know where he will go. He will just go abroad or he will be in India. It will throw out some value. So you actually know what will be the financial burden, right? And you can start planning. One of the, I think the only way to motivate parents is through literacy, right? And I think this is where this community is very useful, where, I mean, you're a community of counselors, teachers, and influencers, right? I mean, this cost being prohibitively high and getting higher, I think you are the right ambassadors to speak and help parents on this. So if because you parents can... are just unaware. I think them, if you can Please. maybe talk about uh, you know, what exactly EduFund Edu does and what is the company about? Correct. So EduFund does two things, right? I think the first thing that we intend to do is educate parents ki bhai, as per your goal and dreams, it's not financial cost aega into the future. That's the first thing we do, the literacy aspect. Now that we've educated you, ki okay, if Ankur wants to go to study to US after 10 years to blah, 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 blah universities, it will be three crores. Then we will show Ankur how can he chase three crores. Now, I've often seen there are uh, three types of approach that people do. One is Literally, log baithe rahenge ki scholarship mil jayega. Last minute tak. Kyun lega tumhe? Right? I mean, why? Right? I mean, why will somebody come and give you 100% scholarship? Right? Second also, while we have loans, right? Uh, do, is it prudent to take 100% loan? Is it financially smart? Is it also easy to take loan? Right? And the third is savings, right? So we tell a parent, you need a little bit of everything, right? Because that is how you build a financial model. So we actually will say, out of the three crores jo Ankur ko chahiye tha, he will probably, depending on the pedigree of the university, he will get 30 lakhs ka scholarship maybe, one crore ka loan, and the rest, one crore savings, right? So this is his optimal mix. And then start this journey. So, because remember, in this journey, scholarship and loan, both, an individual never controls. You never control how much scholarship you will get or your child will get. And you never control how much loan you will get. The only thing that you control in this journey is your own savings. So, pehle us pe dhyan do, baaki ka do baad mein karo. Absolutely. Does that and, make sense? And scholarships, scholarships ko leke bhi, I mean, I mean, I think scholarship is the most exploited word in education marketing. Every university, be it Indian or international, talks about scholarships. So it's one form of a thing we are offering discount. And you know, I was what use karte hai, log. Uh, that's the honest truth of this industry. Correct. Uh, even Correct. when I was at, I mean, I, uh, you know, Mangesh raised an important point that there are very few people in India that even file taxes, income taxes. And it's very hard for universities even to dole out those scholarships because most of the times documents are not complete. And I worked with Indian universities, but international universities, there are more challenges because if you do not have documents, they're just not ready to listen into you. Maybe Indian universities can understand the context and you know you have local connections and you can come to the university campus and you know fight for your own cases. But I think one of one of the another questions that is uh, I want to raise here is what are the you know some of the misconceptions about student loans that people have right? Kya wo misconceptions okay. rehte hai? Okay. So I think the biggest misconception is that ki loan mil jayega, mm -hmm. right? Everybody assumes that loan mil jayega, right? Remember somebody has to underwrite you. Uh, there's also a certain amount of time that it takes to uh, get your loan, right? So I think. Mangesh pointed this out where people wait till the last moment. So, sabse pehle people assume ki mujhe loan mil jayega, right? And number two, they wait till the last moment, right? So, don't know. I think people need to know exactly that both of these things are at play. And third, right? I think a biggest assumption of uh, this loan market 
is that people sometimes worry so much about getting the loan they don't think enough about servicing the loan right boss loan wapis lotana bhi hai hmm ye bhi baat sahi hai right to uske upar you know you have some data i mean <laughs> How many people are actually able to return those loans? Because ये तो आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा कि लोग लोन लेने का समझते हैं बट आजकल की जो इकोनॉमी है स्पेशली ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी इज नॉट राइट एंड देन इन दिस इकोनॉमी हाउ आर पीपल इवन आई मीन दैट्स अनदर पार्ट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल प्लानिंग दैट स्टूडेंट शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ दैट हाउ विल बी दे एबल रिटर्न आई डोंट हैव डेटा विथ मी बट आई कैन डिगअप एंड शेयर विथ यू ऑफलाइन सो आई थिंक वन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग दैट आई थिंक अबाउट सर्विसिंग अ लोन राइट is we always talk about the job market is not the same uh, right and i find it fascinating people will say ki job market is not the same and they will say ki bhai tu loan le le right <laughs> they don't go together right a lot of jobs that used to be there right yeah are not there anymore even like well i my masters was from an ivy league and i see our employment data it hasn't really moved in the last 10 years right if princeton is uh struggling with salary across i banking jobs then trust me there is a problem right so and remember it's also the pedigree not everyone's going to a yale or a princeton baki logo ka kya right so they are taking this 70 lakh rupee loan 80 lakh rupee loan thinking ki mujhe 1 lakh dollar ka naukri mil jayega those jobs have gone right that poor guy is probably back in india in 3 years and working at 20 lakh rupees salary then this bahut math hai. is impossible bahut hai aise bahut cases yeah. mere apne you know correct. anecdotal evidence hai mere paas correct fir ye math is impossible this is like last over mein 40 run jayi hai fir aisa math ho jata right yeah so yeah so this market has really and the fascinating thing is in our massive a uh, student loan market which is becoming bigger and bigger most mm-hmm. of the loans they are very very uh, young which means they have not been serviced back mm. they are just because this market really expanded from 2018 2019 onwards yeah because i see lot of new companies yeah. coming in lot of uh, just being Correct. set up in this space so Correct. loans and financial planning Correct. as i said initially uh, i am as a outsider seeing that there is lot of interest now uh, i think it's more Correct. to do with the growth of international students going abroad from india Correct. you know here Correct. we are seeing multiple, multiple digit growths and people are getting excited by that but i'm sure it's not uh, i mean you would have your own challenges right i mean it's not a uh, a, a straight away you know jaise bolte hain venture funding capacity mein ki matlab पैसा आज डाला तो तीन महीने में डबल हो जाएगा ऐसा वाला तो आपकी स्पेस में भी काम नहीं होगा आई मीन इज देयर अ स्कोप ऑफ आई मीन जस्ट टॉकिंग फ्रॉम अ बिजनेस वेंचर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इन दिस बिकॉज़ आई सी लॉट ऑफ कंपनीज कमिंग अप बट व्हाट इज द बिजनेस मॉडल एक्चुअली एंड इट इज इट सस्टेनेबल इन द इन द शॉर्ट टर्म लॉन्ग टर्म क्या प्लान है आप इस इस स्पेस में सो आई थिंक सडनली आई सी एवरीवन इज वेरी बुलिश अबाउट स्टूडेंट लोन्स राइट इज दिस अ बिग एनफ अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर मल्टीपल कंपनीज आई एब्सोल्युटली थिंक सो but okay. i also think it will change how we are thinking about it because uh, remember a lot of this growth number that we are talking about and everybody jo who became bullish these are growth numbers after covid years those are one time numbers yeah right you Absolutely. are not going to triple every year right yeah. i think that is also part of the realization that the edtech industry is facing now right mm. like har saal 3x dhanda nahi hota hai right ये बिल्कुल सही है सो वन ईयर या राइट सो बिजनेसेस डोंट ग्रो 3x एवरी ईयर एंड यू गिव यू यूज द राइट एग्जांपल एडटेक क्योंकि एडटेक वाला मामला तो इंडिया में काफी अटका पड़ा है आजकल तो उसके बाद तो सारे लोग यू नो इट हैज हैड अ रिपरकशंस फॉर लॉट ऑफ अदर न्यू न्यू वेंचर्स दैट वर बीइंग सेट अप इन द एजुकेशन सेक्टर अभी तो काफी सो आई आई एम जस्ट आई जस्ट वांटेड टू टेक जस्ट अ यू नो टॉप ऑफ द लाइन Uh, feedback from you on what is happening in this sector and if it's headed in the right direction uh and i i'll quickly like to bring in mangesh also mangesh you know you uh, you know you can also chip in about the some of the questions that i asked uh, arindam uh, and we were having nice discussion you can also talk about peaceful loans i mean that's a very interesting name uh but why yeah, i really like the name yeah i really like the name loans.com yeah. so 
आप भी थोड़ा बता सकते हैं यू नो योर फीडबैक ऑन वट एवर यू आर डिस्कसिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चिप इन हैव सम कॉमेंट्स ऑन वॉट माई कन्वर्सेशन विद इन दॉस Oh, see, I, I completely agree with most of the things Arundham said, and hence I I don't see any uh, great point unless you have a uh, different point of view, right? I I will just speak from a trend perspective, right? This is similar journey which uh, developed countries have seen much before us, right? The cost of education going higher and becoming steeper. uh in india the largest retail loan uh, category is home loan which is like 14% of the total loans disbursed in india right uh the say in india education loan is about 0.7% of the entire retail loan category and you will be surprised in us uh, education loan is the second largest loan after mortgages or home loans right so there's a serious headroom and headroom from a business perspective and that's why so many big names like tata capital aditya birla capital kotak mahindra bank etc jumping into this game a uh, because a i fundamentally believe that this builds india right uh, we can't define which family we are born into but we can define how talented we are and where we get with our education right so it's a choice which every family uh, has every student has uh but for that to happen of course the products and the offerings will have to evolve and the natural forces of education becoming more expensive parents won't be able to afford it and banks will banks and bfcs will come together to plug this gap because india being one of the youngest population has to study right higher education has to happen uh and we can't really have a uh, drop off from the 27 28% of uh, higher education uh, conversion from uh, graduation dropping to yeah. yeah dropping to 10% because paisa nahi hai right paisa hai jahan zarurat hai wahan paisa aata hai lending is the oldest oldest profession in the world right so uh, jahan there is a chance of uh, making interest in a safe way i'm sure the lending will continue to expand yes there will be innovative ways found there will be areas where banks and nbfcs will work new startups will work but this is here to stay and this will define say 10 years down the line how the education uh, is looked at and how education is funded the second aspect which i see which will change drastically is i think all of us are on uh, on the other side of uh, gen z consumers and we are very diametrically opposite right we have we are okay being rejected by banks we are okay being rejected in life generally uh, uh, the younger generation is not right neither are they patient with all this bureaucracy red tape kitna time lagega utna time lagega these aspects are bound to change right uh, consumer will come first they are, they are impatient because everything else they get in no time right and hence lot of these things will go down a path where i envision 10 years down the line you should be able to get education loan in like say 10 minutes right not these bloody 10 days uh, one month two months right of course that's the dream with which we started peaceful loan but even statistically trend wise i see it going in that direction i mean one of the limits i mean you there are two things that i want to chip into here i mean you talked about the us model and you, we have heard news from us about the debt crisis the education loan crisis that is happening that so many students are under debt and they are not able to service their loans so i mean a what are the lessons that we are learning from us or if there are any lessons from the us market that we plan to because you know i think most of the things that we are trying to now that we are moving towards consumerism and you touched upon that ki aajkal ki gen z ko sab ko immediately chahiye you know zomato generation hai uh, they don't want to wait but then as arindam was saying they also have to service back those loans so wo jo dono ka ek ye jo understanding hai and you are also direct nep says that currently our gross enrollment ratio is about 27% uh, in the coming years the government plans to make it 50% Uh, that means more capacity more universities will be coming up not only in 
इंडिया इंडिया में तो आएंगी प्राइवेट स्पेस में बहुत ज्यादा आएंगी एंड अरिंदम अगेन वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट दैट इंडिया में कॉस्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन इज ग्रोइंग सो हाई आई मीन आई हैव माई सेल्फ सीन दैट curve over the last decade of my life where i have worked in higher education sector in india that the cost of education is and the universities are now more and more even the university the private universities want students to take loans if a student used to ca- comes to a director ed- of admissions office we definitely look for partners in terms of banks nbfcs that we can partner with and they can say hey student you can go to this bank or you can go to this person and you know because scholarships are now again being limited not every you are again both of you are mentioning scholarships are not that easy to come by i mean universities have a limit so there are a lot of factors and i think now that i have heard both of you i think now i understand this space a little bit better but i think when what i was saying saying is that definitely i, I agree this sector is here to stay grow uh, and you are absolutely correct but what are the lessons that we should learn from the west and implement maybe we can go to arindam and then come back to mangesh sure i think the one thing that we should learn right from this entire student loan debacle that has gone through in the us uh is that we should really underwrite loans well right right i mean if you say ki loan le lo koi na nahi bolega right nobody ever says no to a loan nobody right so you need to underwrite well right you need to know which degrees can actually be job worthy mm. right are those degrees going to be around right i remember when i first landed up as a freshman in 2000 i used to meet people who were studying all types of random degrees right and i used to wonder ye kya naukri karenge and i used to always wonder <laughs> and later on i used to find a lot of them would start working at a store or whatever right now if you are working at a store you are not going to service 100 Thirty thousand dollars of loan, mm. or hundred and fifty thousand dollar of loan, right? So instead of just bankrolling a uh, or underwriting because you need a loan book growth, start funding degrees that are job worthy, right? Start funding universities that have credibility that can get you a job, right? Just taking a loan, going to some random university in Canada won't get you a job, mm. right? फिर आपको गांव का जमीन बेच के वही लोन चुकाना पड़ेगा क्या मतलब हुआ यार आई थिंक सॉरी जस्ट जस्ट वांट टू यू नो गिव यू सेकंड्स आई 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 यू आर एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट दिस इज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not named the school, but I recently met a principal of a leading school chain in Punjab. They have 22 schools. and uh, the principal literally was crying and saying ki you know people are selling off their farm lands they are taking loans students are going there but the college that they are going to are substandard colleges the courses are substandard and the moment they land up in canada they are in debt they are not able to service back the loans they are ending up at petrol stations trying right. to mug up money and the aim which was in the initially to learn now has shifted to service the debt and so that right. family can survive i mean that's a truly on ground situation what you are saying see loan in theory and as mangesh said right it's very smart if you play the loan wave correct as a consumer right aapko tax benefit mil raha hai aapko tcs mil raha hai benefit mil raha hai if you play all of that very smartly and correctly loan is a great tool right however very few people retail people right all of us come as retail consumers right actually understand and handle loan well right be it mm-hmm. any type of loan right most people don't do well with leverage so education when you take leverage is very important right you can get a dollar loan in india 13 14 percent ke how many people even know ki aap 13 14 percent ka dollar loan lete ho that is actually 17 18 percent because dollar appreciates how many people even know that right pata. if you are taking 17 18 percent loan to to sahukar ka paisa hai that's Correct. ridiculous rate wo dete dete any जवानी ढल जाएगी आपकी का लोन देते देते सो आई मीन एडुकेशन आई मीन इट कम्स डाउन टू एडुकेटिंग द कंज्यूमर राइट वी ऑल से केवाईसी नो योर क्लाइंट इट इज एग्जैक्टली दिस राइट टेल हिम नो योर लोन राइट नो योर लेंडर राइट इट कम्स टू एडुकेशन आई एग्री आई थिंक आई आई कंप्लीटली एग्री विद are the only thing which i am <clears throat> on the fence with is 
Indian student, Indian parents, the families will have to psychologically accept to live with loans, which we don't, right? We are a saving economy. Mm. The psychological change of, okay, boss, this loan will be my lifetime rahega, and this is the cost of getting a better opportunity, right? Is something we'll have to learn to live with, which we don't, right? We, we hardly speak to our children about financials or financial education at home, right? Very few times we have that conversation. So this becomes a burden, but that psychological shift, as I said, forces of nature, it becoming more expensive will force us to do that. But that change we'll have to uh, accept. Wonderful. So I think that's about the time we had. I mean, I'm looking at the clock. Uh, if there are any questions from the audience, we are happy to take them. Anybody can use, uh, you want to type in your questions or any comments or feedback, or you can even unmute yourself. Please do that. Uh, and we can, you know, wait for another 60 seconds. I can have final comments in meanwhile from both Mangesh and Anindam on, uh, you know, their own companies. I mean, if they, because we are a counseling community, there are over 300 plus counselors who are part of the outreach collective. There are a thousand plus people that are connected to us, either which ways through WhatsApp groups or our email databases. And we'll be sharing this recording with all of them. I mean, Arindam, you know, your message to, you know, with to the career counseling community, to the educators, as you said, you know, we are influencers. We talk to these students. We help them with their applications. But most of the times, the financial planning is one part that we may be missing out on and we do not have the expertise in. So how can we collaborate with your companies? I mean, how can counselors uh, work with you? I mean, Arinda, first you and then Mangesh. Sure. So I think, yeah, as I mentioned, right, like I look at all of you as very important in a student's journey, right? And one thing that we don't talk often about is money, right? Money is a very important conversation yeah. to have, right? Uh, this entire dream building exercise money is very important so i would really request you to educate uh use your influence and educate parents and students right about the cost right and i think sagar he leads all i mean our partner communication and partnerships so i think anytime anybody wants to work with us on awareness uh student education awareness on cost right please we would be more than happy to come and speak at a school come and speak to your so whatever right i mean we are open we are here to educate parents and uh, yeah get this uh, movement going yeah thank you so much Arindam. uh yes so sagar, thank you. sagar is an active member of toc has been doing some fantastic yes. work i mean right from the onset of toc days i mean he's been with us and uh, uh, I'm so happy that he is with you. I mean, I'm sure he is an asset wherever he works. Oh, we are also he... very happy. We are yeah, very happy. Yeah. yeah. And Ankur, where are you based? I'll meet you. I haven't uh, somehow. I've I'm in Delhi. You. I'm in Delhi. In Delhi. Okay. Done. Next I'm time happy. I'm there, we'll catch up. Yeah. Sorry, Mangesh. I have a call. I'm going to bounce off. Uh, hey, Perfect. nice talking to you, Mangesh. Uh, nice meeting you. Thank Perfect. you, guys. Thank Thanks. you so much for your time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mangesh, your. Uh, you know, your, your remarks, final remarks on how counselors can work with you and, you know, what will be your pitch to them? At the cost of me maybe being politically not so correct, uh, don't be afraid of this. This is an important angle of uh, education, right? I, I've spoken to so many counselors who are afraid of this financial aspect, even in their head and hence don't want to address it. Use us our teams as uh, your support system to uh, not just help educate yourself, your teams firstly, so that they can answer the first set of questions which come to them. I'm more than happy to do these sessions every week with counselors, their team, uh, so that they can get educated how to answer the questions which students, their parents ask. And secondly, if... Uh, there is here and now problem more than happy to solve it right alongside uh, all those counselors so treat us as your extended teams reach out to us uh, finance i think uh, all financial service in my opinion is somebody using jargon so that the layman feels afraid and is willing to take Absolutely. decisions right let us solve that let's bridges that gap we understand the jargons we can simplify those for you 
that was one of the efforts in my ppt today so allow us to simplify don't be afraid we are there with you we'll help you at every single step whether it's education knowledge helping students for the problem which is here and now right always possible uh, feel free to directly reach out to me i'm more than happy to uh, speak to any one of you and solve the problem amazing thank you mangesh uh, for that wonderful session and i want to also acknowledge uh, narinam and sagar for their presentations and contribution in making this conversation so fruitful and informative uh, thank you to all the audience that came in and listening to this conversation uh, I, truly as we say in toc uh, you know the learning continues and we will be continuing with a series of webinars and information sessions over the coming weeks also so keep coming back keep learning keep growing and keep contributing back to the community it's a goodbye from me thank you so much and have a good night everyone bye bye thank you ankur thank you bhakti thank you thank you everyone